<laughs> yeah, man. Y'all gotta throw the 10. <laughs> Y'all gotta throw the 10 at this point. <laughs> Yo, man, dead all this rap, John. Y'all better stop fighting for real. <laughs> yeah, um, well, it has been a crazy 24 hours, has it not? Has it not? Clearly, because I don't make this type of video. I'm very much scripted, well thought out, thought pieces, analytical, introspective content, interpretive content. But, but, um, <laughs> I've been very eager to talk about this with y'all. And this is something I was going to include in my follow-up video on the hip-hop video I made. And while that follow-up video isn't about this spe specifically, entirely this section would be included. And initially, my thought process was going to be, this will simmer down after a while, and then I'll go ahead and charge that one up. But this one does not look like it's about to simmer down anytime soon. This one is high, intense, I'm about to throw a flame ball at you. Oh, okay. We'll hold this fire style fireball jutsu. Okay, well, hold on. You think you're yeah. <laughs> Madara? <laughs> That's nuts. Because really and truly, Kendrick is Madara when, when he dropped the first meteor. And that first meteor was, what do you call it? Um, 616 uh, in LA, right? And <laughs> Kendrick. Stop that with Family Matters. And then, no, not Kendrick, Drake. And then Kendrick goes, that was cool. But what about the second one? <laughs> and he dropped the second job. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, and I can, I, I'm going to keep it a buck. Drake looked like he was panicking when he dropped his little IG story. He was like, oh, what? I got a kid? Where? Like, no, nah, bro, you're panicking. That's ready to keep it back with. Anyway, I wanted to share my views on this because while I'm going to you know, save this for a deeper analysis on the follow-up video I'm going to make about hip-hop being the instrument of uh, America's capitalism and greed. I feel like this is one of those moments where everyone is sharing their opinion. Even uh, Moist Critical, who has, as he would say himself, his opinion on this is as, you know, valuable as a, a fish trying to climb a tree to go ahead and present its parkour skills. It really does not mean much in his words, but even he has a level of excitement towards it. This brought ZS and B. Lu out of the woodworks from their China to talk about this. So, and I'm gonna keep it a buck. Everyone is exploiting the content, is exploiting the content from this. Let's really keep it a buck fifth. If you're a journalist, you're talking about this. News outlets, you're talking about this. This is content for next month, right? This is why I'm, which is why I'm here right now. <laughs> so, let me quickly get a swing of this. Tropical juice, Tropicana, the best juice out there. Orange juice, apple juice, it's second to none. Tropical, Tropicana, Tropical Juice Gang, hold on. Now let's get into this. As you know, unscripted, not much editing, raw thoughts and opinions. Because I'm very much intrigued about this. I've listened to the most recent diss tracks multiple times now. Keep in mind, when I was... I was chilling when this was going down. Like, the rest of the world when this was going down. Drake Drop Family Matters. We all listen to it. It's a good track. It is a good track. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I like it. And I'm going to say this very impartially. Because if you ask me who I think is better between the two, I feel like doing my content and how I present myself is very obvious. I like Kendrick more than I like Drake. But I'm going to be very impartial about this. This current cycle of diss tracks between push-ups euphoria that ai trash drake did and then 616 in la family Maz and meet the grams i don't think we've seen something like this in hip-hop history i don't think we've seen two people at the top of their game at the top of the culture that really matter putting their careers on the line go back and forth like this not even Hove and Nas were like this. Nas just dropped Ether and called it a day. Like Nas just killed Jay and called it a day. Jay had to come back with Super Ugly and he got flamed for it. But these two have been dropping, excluding that trash that is Taylor made freestyle, 
because the second you start using AI to try and make a diss, you instantly lose. I, I, I don't care what no one thinks. That was not clever. That was not witty. That was trash. It, it, it wasn't good. And then he did the whole eight mile. Um, I am white. I am a fucking but like, shut up, bro. Like, quit being scary. I haven't seen anyone go back and forth like this to such a, to such a caliber. So I listened to Family Matters and I liked it. I initially thought the whole bump for your funk type of John that Drake has for his diss track was going to slightly dampen the quality of it, but it didn't. I will say he was very good at jabbing because he does what Jay-Z does and what, what Jay-Z did in TakeOver, which was talk to multiple people and dedicate verse to certain people which you know i'm okay i'm not comparing jay-z to, to drake i'm not doing that jay-z's always gonna be better than drake he's a way better writer he's a way better rapper he's, he's just a, he's just like jay-z is top three drake is not even you know i wouldn't even put drake in like top 50 maybe um no not, no not even maybe i don't put drake in top 50 anyway jay-z's top three undisputed to me as a uh, hip hop artist, but it kind of had elements of that same thing, and he did that in push ups. And I was thinking, okay, with this one, it's just gonna be like seven minutes about Kendrick. He didn't do that, he spent like the first part a little bit, and then the last verse just on Kendrick, and the mid section was on Metro, Rick Ross, and you know, uh, Future and The Weeknd, and everyone else. and while I think they were good jabs and while I think they were good punches, it didn't really knock anybody out. This is the thing with Family Mess. It didn't really knock anybody out. Like, it's uh, like at most, it staggered Kendrick. So we thought. <laughs> at, at the time, I thought, okay, he staggered him. And I'm going to keep it a buck. You know, the beat switch from the first John to the second one, um, that's a head nodder. It is. And Drake is admittedly good at creating these type of tracks that you could play in a club but that's once again that's a polarizing opinion to where is you allowing your art to do that reducing the quality of the disrespect in that record which i'm going to get into i think now it kind of works because let's keep it a buck at this in this juncture drake is pop hop yeah, he's a pop hop artist. He, he's more like he's he's a good rapper. He is a good rapper, but for the past like eight or nine years, he's just been. I know when the hotline bling had ass. So it's like seeing him get back into this bag as consistently is good, right? I don't think this is a good thing for the culture or the black community. I'm gonna get into that later though. Uh, I'm going to add some thoughts on that later. But I liked it. But now I don't want to see him talk to anyone else besides Kendrick. I don't want to hear anyone else's opinion either. I, I don't care what <laughs> Rick Ross big ass thinks. I don't care what Metro thinks. Go make your drums. I don't care what... Who is he talking? I, like, I don't care what Future thinks. I don't care. I never cared what French Montana th- <laughs> what French Montana thought about this. Never cared about that. I don't care what Lupe always oh, think about this. Lupe, like no disrespect to Cuz, but no one cares about you know if you can beat anybody in the world. Like no one, no one's asking for you, Lupe. Shut up. I don't care what I see. Always ask God think, but I don't care what no one thinks about this. I don't want to hear Drake talk about some Future as much as that shit affected Drake a lot because. As he would say, Metro got your mind twisted, and you're now you're just hating by association. It feels like, um, I don't care about that. Just talk to Kendrick. Like you can't really, you can't have an omnidirectional ricochet bullet your way out of this one. Because here's the thing, this is the first beef Drake is in, to where his life is at risk. With Meek. He was going to win that anyway. There was nothing me could have done that was going to really scare them. With Pusha T, in the long run, he came out fine. He didn't really respond back to him, but he came out pretty well. Yeah, he brought a kid into the mix. I don't have an opinion on that, but he came out fine. But that's Pusha T. And I'm not saying Pusha T's trash or anything like that, but commercially, Pusha T's not touching Drake. This is Kendrick Lamar. 
This is probably the only obstacle that Drake cannot spit that I got better hits. I'm better league. Com- I'm better league. I'm better commercial. I'm better in terms of what like you can't like you can't talk that with Kendrick. You can talk that with Meek. You can talk that with Tiger. You can talk that with um Push. You can talk that with you know with them. But this is Kendrick. This is the big stepper. This is probably the only one that's that can really got your neck with it, right? So. The video was kind of cool, especially when he was had the whole little good kid, Mad City van. That was kind of cool as well. But none of it, like, Fan Mass didn't really feel like a big knockout. Like, it didn't feel like he was really, like, wailing on Cuz for real. I feel like with this particular record, um, the biggest thing he said was you was beating on your girl. Which is a heavy allegation to make, which is one which can really taint Kendrick's image when you know the type of person Kendrick is. And if you cannot back this one up, Drake, you gotta shut up just forever, yo. For real, for real. And this, I feel like both of this kind of goes into the massaging that's really plaguing the hip-hop community as well. Because as much as a lot of people, and this kind of goes both in and outside the culture, but people love to say women ain't... You know, Future can talk about how women is just sub standard and so on and so forth. And y'all can make all those claims about how women are so on and so forth. But they are the ammunition y'all use for everything. Look at grifting-ass Chris Brown, who could have dropped that song at any given moment, at any given time. But he didn't until all this is happening. So, yeah, we can really see who's really exploiting off of something that has nothing to do with you, Chris Brown. Yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not clever with your tall, dancing ass. He's talking about how, oh... Well, you want to talk about my gun being on Rihanna, but you were hitting up Swartz in the elevator, and I, you know what I mean? Like, I did, you know what I mean? I I did it with your girl in the elevator, too. <laughs> no, not in the elevator. <laughs> that would be nuts, nasty, and wild. I did it with your girl, and you didn't even know about it. Oh, yeah, let's cheer for that. Like, this is how sick this John is, y'all. We're cheering for um infidelity still. You know what I mean? I feel like this, you know, this little uh, rap battle, uh, um, rap battle event that we're all witnessing right now has us in the moment at like in the time cheering for things that feel very weird ha ha you're a deadbeat ha ha he really is a groomer ha ha you really do mess with a whole bunch of people that should be on a certain list like (laughs) even though we're not saying it like that it's we find so much entertainment in this there's disgust, yeah, but I feel like the entertainment overweighs the disgust. Because we always knew Drake was weird. And we've always known Drake is not necessarily the greatest role model. And he's a big hypocrite when it comes down to a lot of things he talks about. Which, and I'm going to get into that with Kendrick's this as well, which I think is better. If you're like, Redux, who do you think is winning? I think Kendrick is winning. I, I don't even think it's a really big contest between the two. And that's me being am, as unbiased as I can with it. Uh, but the allegations of him claiming that he, you know, Kendrick is being on Whitney, like you can't just, you know, slip in and slip out of that one. No diddy. If anything, you should have spent way more time talking about that. Where'd you get that from? Can you prove that? Like, what video is this that we're talking about? Like, let's really keep it a stack. Like, why are you rapping? Like, you really. Like, why are you rapping like you're having fun with this? This is not fun, dog. <laughs> like, it really is not fun. Like, this is some serious... If this goes down, we could really tank careers with it. Like, this is... Like, careers could be ended with this. So, when Drake spent the latter half, his, you know, his last verse talking about... um. Uh, you know, Kendrick and the things he said, and which I think he has some cool balls in it. Like, you know, you want to take up for Pharrell and come get his legacy at my house. Like, you know, that's kind of cool. And, you know, um, uh, <laughs> fuck the big three. It's only Big D and his video proof. Pause, but <laughs> okay. And um, I think there's very weird, a, a very weird, hip, like hypocritical, na- a hypocritical nature when you talk about some. Why are you hiding your world from the, you know, why, why are you hiding your kid from the world? Go ahead and bring my, you know, put into the camera, say cheese, but we didn't know about Adonis until Pusha said something about it. And it's only after that you start putting him in photos and stuff like that, too. You know what I mean? 
you, I mean, under that culture, you feel like you should be proud to say, I got a kid, but you hit that because of guilt and shame. And it's probably the same thing with this alleged daughter you have. If you do have a daughter from 11 years, and that's crazy. And you should never throw a diss battle again because anytime someone of credible rapping ability is going to come at your neck, you're going to have a kid to come along with it. At this point, I'm going to keep it a buck. <laughs> uh, it was cool in the moment, but I feel like the, the the mastermind that is Kendrick, and this is why I feel like it's so funny. Kendrick had this John on lock. Like, he had this prepped and ready to go. And I want to talk about this mall stuff real quick for against Kendrick. This whole, you know, this whole rumor that this is all just fake news and Kendrick is spitting out fake news and Drake was planning a mall. That looks way worse for Drake than it is for Kendrick. Because imagine saying, hey, yo, so I want you to go ahead, right? And tell this, uh, tell, tell this little that, um, all of us are offenders. Um, I got a kid that no one knows about. Uh, we have a ST rig going on low key. And, um, we're all just nasty. Go tell them that. And then when he makes a song about it, say we're joking. You know what I mean? Like, that'll really, like, no, fam. Like, no, Crody. Like, that's not a good look. That's really not a good look. So, if even if you're fabricating all of this, is it really that deep? Like, is the business that important for you to get so much awareness and really go ahead and shame someone and embarrass someone to the point where you actually um, platform yourself in such a light to where it's all untrue? Like, that doesn't make you look like a genius. It makes you look like an idiot, Drake. That's assuming if the rumor is true that he's out here, you know, I mean, uh, artificially planting information in people's heads. Now, the very nature of all of... Uh, no, okay, let me talk about that last, and then I'll talk about um, the Kendrick Dawn. Kendrick is disgusting. That's villainous behavior. Okay, this is why we should all just leave that man alone. <laughs> This is why y'all should leave Kendrick alone. And this is why those boogeyman allegations are now true. Because y'all are doing a victory lap with Family Matters. And an hour after you post that. Like, you know how crazy it is for someone to say Kendrick dropped. And everyone collectively said, yeah, he dropped yesterday. No, he dropped again. Like, like I said, that's the media. Like, that is the second media he dropped on Dog, yo. Like, okay, you got the first one. Let me see how you catch the second one now. Right? Madara Kendrick Uchiha. Kendrick Uchiha for real. And that second one was scary. Like, Meet the Grams is not a good song. And I don't mean, like, not a good song as if, like, I can't listen to it. Like, that's, like, that's arguably, you could put that in the top 10 for this tracks. Because that wasn't about, like, I'm about to make sure this sounds good. You can play it in the club. No, this is something you want to hear once. This is, like, this sounds like the Grim Reaper. It's eerie. It's cold. It sounds like he wrote that with a scythe etched in Drake's blood. Like, that's what that sounded like. Because it sounds like he really hates this guy. Now it's really personal. And I felt like Drake, on his other track with Family Matters... He's still too focused on making that like drop, drop, drop. Like you know, you know, you know, the bump is cool and it has that type of value to it. But this is not cool. This is cold. And the biggest thing that Kendrick alluded to was you have an organization that is very slimy in ways that I'm not going to say on YouTube, right? It's very slimy in ways where if these allegations are true, it could be very damaging for all y'all. LeBron, don't talk to them more. Curry, don't talk to them no more. All y'all, don't talk to them no more. Because if these things are true, hey yo, Drake Diddy in full effect. No, I mean Drake gonna be Diddy bopping his 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 way over to um a courthouse. If it's really in the degree Kendrick claims it to be. And I feel like how Kendrick constructed this was very personal. 
Like, he doesn't talk about no one else. He talks about his family in such a way I haven't really heard any other diss track uh, go into. Like, this wasn't some type of, like, I got a 4-5 and I'm going to shoot you in the head with it. Hope you make out, you know, all your owls going to be dead with it. Like, it was not that. Like, this was straight, your son, Dennis, is disgusting. Your son, Sandra, is disgusting. Your father, Adonis, is disgusting. Like, that's why that hit so, uh, so critically, because he is not playing. You know, like, when he ends off saying, like, you know, you lied about the owner, I was like, I can offer you some help, fuck a rap battle, this is a long life battle with yourself, like, okay, Lux, <laughs> loaded, like, talk to him, beloved, like, you know, you lied about your accent. You lied about the surgery. You lied about your kid. You lied at, like, I'm sorry, but if I'm Drake, I'm, I'm going to start crying. I, I'm, I will start crying. But once again, all of this to me, in the moment, while we're all enjoying this, like, oh, this is hip-hop and hip-hop is back. Is this what we want hip-hop to be? Like, this isn't sport. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's like, oh, you've been a bitch. Like, I'm not saying that at all. Like, this is, well, this is bound to happen. But. This is the most hip hop has felt connected to each other in a very long time, and it's in absolute discord. It's connected in the disgrace we have for Kendrick fans and Drake fans and everyone else surrounding it, and everyone is exploiting the business of what's going on right now. That's really what's happening. These two tracks are trending number one and number two, respectively, on YouTube. It has people like Zia's coming out the woodworks. It has journalists, you know, working around the clock, deciphering this, bringing up old tweets, so on and so forth. It is really and truly bringing back all the negative and derogatory stereotypes that plague the black community and they're making a bank off of it. Oh, you're a deadbeat. <laughs> oh, you been your mom's? Oh, I ain't gonna come back from that one. Like, this is some... Deep psychological trauma being presented on the forefront of these two rappers, these two artists, and we're all feeding into it, and we're all, you know, we're all loving it. We're all using it for views, right? Present company included. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not excluded from that because I'm talking about it in the way I want to talk about it as well, right? So, and then you have the the more nuanced notions of uh, of colorism going around. And, and um, you know, while you have your Twitter folks talking about, you know, dark skin versus light skin, and, you know, you have a mixed queen, and we all know that, well, I, I, I won't assume we all know, but my interpretation of it is that when Drake talks about it like that, he's not talking about, um, it's about, like, the content of Drake's, or what should I say, the content of the absence of Drake's blackness. Because when you listen to Drake, you don't think about revolution. You don't think about, is, you know, he's for the struggle. He's, you know, he, he's for the people. Like, you don't. When you listen to Drake, you don't really feel like it's black music. When you listen to Cole, it's black music. Speaking of Cole, real quick, quick side bit. <laughs> Y'all may go back to the old video I made about hip hop and be like, your Cole comments age like milk. I still stand by those comments because it wasn't. I get why he did it. I, I, I always said why. I, I always said I get why he did it. My drama was like, don't enter the ring if your heart isn't in it. Either you're in it for real or you're not in it for real. My own was just about how you delivered it. But y'all say imagine Sisyphus happy. Imagine J. Cole. Imagine Jermaine happy. Because, look, there was a tweet that said, um, <laughs> y'all talking about some like, J. Cole, you backed out of it. And J. Cole says, I know these niggas. You don't. <laughs> and that's what I like about it. I'm like, I like I've always liked J. Cole. Still. And, um, and that is very much like him. It's very much like him to not being involved in all of this. Because we don't want... Also, like, we don't want to see J. Cole in this. We don't want to see J. Cole in this. Like, we really don't. I still think how he made that track was trash. How he took it down was also trash. And how he apologized for it was also trash. Um, but ultimately, in the long run, this has had a greater effect on his career. It'll, it'll look like it because you don't want to be involved in all of this. So, but back onto, on, uh, onto his colorism, uh, colorism comments, um, when, 
when the topic of blackness is discussed in these raps, you can't really compare the two of them. Drake does not make, and I'm going to say this in a way i got to be careful with, because I, I, I don't want to be uh, misinterpreted. Drake does not make that type of black music. Like, when you think of black rap songs, you don't think of Drake. You think of Kendrick. You think of, you think of like, a butterfly, Illmatic, uh, Raw Kim, actual hip-hop like that. The, what Drake makes is pop rap. You know what I mean? Like, he's gone, you know, you know he's gone into that. So, when we talk, when, when Kendrick talk about those, you know, his black features, that's what it's kind of, you know, alluding to. Not just how you look, because he's, Kendrick doesn't have a problem with, you know, J. Cole and how he looks like that, because we don't question J. Cole like that. J. Cole's always been, like, I'm black and I'm proud, but Drake has never been that. He's always, you know what I mean, you know, in his tracks, I'm too, I'm too white for the black kids, I'm too black for the white kids, and, you know, in his old tracks, and his logic ass. Um, um, that's what that was geared, uh, you know, you know, get towards. And so I think Drake hears that and like, okay, well, you say I'm mixed race, but you you know, look at your baby mom. She's lighter than me. And, you know, you don't want to bring, like, that's not how the kids play that because you don't want to bring someone who's darker than you around and so on and so forth. I don't think that's what he's approaching. And then on that point of uh, the wives and the kids and, you know, the misogyny on both ends of it, um, I'm going to save that for the other video. I can feel some of y'all giving me some evil glass for that. But this intention was not to go on a... This is already a long-ass ramble off the rip already. Uh, but I'm going to end off this by saying this is a further promotion of just exploiting uh, our attention and the nature. This is a business. Y'all should not forget this is a business. Look at how many people are going to profit off of this. Look at how many views people are going to get off of this. Kendrick dropping this an hour after Drake is nuts. I don't think... No, I do think. We all see how nuts that is, right? And we all see how it is causing our attention to be almost divided. It's contained within this, but it's also divided. It's being contained. I remember, you know, uh, uh, Aziz and Bilu saying that this is, you know, you know, you know, I, I, I... you know, they said, I don't think this is like slap, like slap someone in the face type worthy. I think this is. Because they're like, oh, you know, Nas and Jay-Z was way worse. Nah, <laughs> nah, it ain't. I don't think um, that felt more contained because of the era that was in. You know, I mean, the internet wasn't really popping like that. Um, this is on rap. I, I need to say rap genius. Man, I'm old. <laughs> I'm not even old like that. But, this, you know, this is on genius within like the album. They're working around the clock with this. You know, these different lyrics. All oh, y'all are. Uh, but people are gonna profit. Business will be booming. You know, I mean, streams will go up. Within the vision, there is money. Think about how rap was most of last year. Think about how rap was before all of this. Within this feud, within this dichotomy that's being created of whose side are you on? It's going to inevitably create the conversation, polarization. Content polarization is uh, always a strong leading factor of creating good, captivating content, no matter what you do. And um, no matter the outlet you have or the medium you project that in, you're going to get some views one way or another, right? Um, that's just what it is. It's, um, it's interesting times we're in. And... I am going to have a very fun time seeing how people look back on this, you know, five years from now. Because this was one of those you had to be there moments, especially when all this went down, like like the past one, like, you know, the actual hour it happened when you had all the streamers talking about, like, oh, he just dropped the track. Like, this one is you have to be there. This is a cemented history, a history moment. Of course it is. And we're all being a part of it. But no matter the side we're on, it's at the end of the day it serves the greater interests of those that could not give less of a damn. Like, you know, to the powers that be, they've been doing stuff since way back when and was not looking at them. Uh but we got these two black folk talking about being offenders and bad baby moms and dads and uh Yeah, that's good. Let's keep that direction over there. Um 
Hey, look. Everyone needs therapy. Everyone needs therapy. Maury shown therapy. Oh, by the way, and that whole, uh, you know, Kendrick, his kid not being his kid. How y'all knowing this? <laughs> how y'all knowing this for real? Like, that's what I want to know. How, like, how y'all really knowing all this? Uh, screw the moles. Y'all need to, y'all need some therapy. Like, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all need some family time. Like, y'all need to really keep to yourselves. For real, for real. Like, we don't need to know all this. And that's like, damn, I keep talking. Th- that's the other thing. <laughs> As fans, we feel entitled to know all this. That's why I feel like with the whole kid situation, it sucks because uh, we, you, you know you bring a dance into you know Drake's son into the limelight. That's his business. If he wanted to keep the world like that's why I agree with him. He's like I wasn't hiding uh, my kid from the world. I was hiding the world from the kid. Type John. That's fine. You're Drake. You look at who what's who he, whatever that kid's name is of Kylie and Tiger not Kylie and Ty- Tiger Kylie and Travis there's cameras in their face all the time look at Blue Ivy I mean I suppose Blue Ivy embraces that culture and so does Northwest but the kids of celebrities they're like it's a tough life for them like they're always in the limelight so I understand why you want to keep them concealed you know what I mean you can't really be mad at that but as fans we feel so entitled to know all this about them because of the age that we're in because we care more about our satisfaction as opposed to their privacy and you know that's another thing that this is really promoting um we should know everything about everyone all the time now i feel like as far as the allegations goes uh for kendrick um if that's true a lot of y'all need to be locked the hell up y'all nasty y'all sick y'all disgusting and y'all should really think about how much of this is worth the association of being around drake um because at the end of the day your soul will be tallied up when it's time for you to go and when you think you're going to be going up past them pearly gates, uh, you're going to have another surprise going for you. Like, you should keep it a stack fifth. Uh, anyway, let's take one more swing of this Tropicana. If y'all think none of y'all can ever call me a hater again, y'all can't call me a hater again because this is the level of hating that that you just can't make up. Because right before I was about to upload, I just see <laughs> he dropped again. <laughs> Alright, so, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, let me take a swing of this Tropicana, <laughs> Tropical Juice, <laughs> sponsor. <laughs> this is, um, this is the craziest weekend, the craziest weekend in a minute, because I went off of saying that in the moment, we can really be caught up in the limelight of everything that's going on and it can cause us to amplify and greater magnify what's being said what's being released and an overall type of uh, excitement and enthusiasm we have for this when you know it's happening in, in, in real time this is synchronicity in full effect but then you hear this and then you hear what Cole is saying, and he's doubling down on everything he previously mentioned. Now he's brought Wayne into this. Apparently, Drake has had some. Uh, you know, he was doing. He was in cahoots with Lil Wayne's girl, whilst Wayne was in prison. What is going on? Like, and I will say that whole. You ain't a college, you ain't, you know what I mean? You ain't this, you a colonizer. That is nuts. And the build up to that from how he was saying, you know, you know, you got this from 21, you got this from Lil Baby, from Future, from Quaver, from Young Thug, from Two Chains, and you was in Atlanta. Kendrick is really doubling down on that notion that Drake was 
and was in way over his head. Drake Kendrick is not push at sea. He's not meek. He's not. He, 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 he's no one else you thought you could really step up to. This isn't a light plate, Drake, and now we're seeing the effects of this. I mean, it's still just... I mean, I'm still of the opinion of how this is a... In the grand scheme of things, what's going on right now, and the content what's going on right now, it does make this culture look far more damaging. But it's still very exciting, and it, that's what's so... Uh, it can create that indifference. Like, as a fan, as a fan right now, I'm loving this. Like, as a fan right now, there is... I, I haven't been this engaged in hip-hop in a very long time. But then I, but then as the critique, as the analyzer, you, you also look at this as what's really being said. What's the effects of this? Like, like connotatively speaking, um... How does this represent us uh, in large? Relative to grander corporations and to other things that are going on right now. But when you want to exclusively look at this as just rap and hip-hop, <laughs> dog, I-, I don't even know if you can do that no more. Because Kendrick has taken it to a place we have never seen before. He called, and this is, and this is very, rel- like, this, f- this feels like he wrote this like within an hour after you heard like Family Matters. Cause he mentioned the slaves bar. Like, you know, he said something like, you know, Humble Double Down calling the slaves and Atlanta was the Mecca building railroads and trains and he's really attacking that point. Um he didn't necessarily address the allegations about how he was, you know, hitting on his baby moms. So that is you know, we still gotta wait for that one. Drake is under the illusion that this is uh, equal footing on platform. I feel like Drake didn't take this as seriously as he should have. I don't feel like he is looking at this as seriously as he should. Because if he was really in the intense battle mode, you would you need to get off of IG. You need to stop with the captions. And you need to focus. No one else matters. I said it before. No one else matters. We don't care what you think about Metro. We don't care about what you think about Thug, Gunner, Baby, Kanye. They do not matter. Your next song needs to be about Kendrick and Kendrick only. You need to come with some bars, dog. Like, this is not something that um that was in your bingo card, Drake. He has now put the entirety of OVO on the flame. And this is the power of, you know, Kendrick. After he dropped the, um, we don't want to hear you saying nigga no more. He's now getting, Drake is now getting clowned for that. Now, I, you know, before Family Matters came out, they were like, yeah, Drake, don't say that no more. Like, that's how the power Kendrick has. And right now, he's exercising the power to move the masses in full effect. Also, Kendrick has been waiting to battle someone. Like he's been bloodthirsty to fight somebody, and he wasn't gonna accept. He wasn't going to accept anything less than Drake. Like Big Sean is small fry in this, you know, you know, compared to Drake. And I feel like fans, Drake fans specifically, didn't really know about Kendrick to this degree. They thought he was just a, the I'm the lyrical miracle. I remember he was conflicted type of rapper because they've never seen him battle for real like that. Oh, they saw him throw the warning shot with control, but once they really see, like, now they're really seeing Kendrick can rap. Like, Kendrick can really rap. Like, this isn't some type of sneak this subliminal. This is some type of, I'm about to talk about gun bars. This is, I'm rapping to you. I'm talking to you. Like, this is, like, you know, yo, Big Gerald, that's the way you talk to your son type beat. That's what this is. And a lot of Drake fans were in denial not thinking that Drake, no, not Drake, Kendrick even had that capacity because he's never really battled nobody like that. He hasn't really been in a diss like that. You know, we see Drake go against Meek Mill and push a T and throw shots at Tiger and so on and so forth. And, you know, you you know, you know evaluate what Drake can do off the strength of that. But you can't really evaluate what Kendrick can do because there is no 
uh, track record of his uh, battleground. This is the first time you see Kendrick in the ring, and you know, the Kendrick in the ring, and you can clearly see why he's been saying the entire time, "Do not mess with me." And there is not three of us; it's just me. And if you keep playing with me, I'm going to show you why that is. I really like this diss track. I've heard it multiple times now. Of course, I'm going to hear it some more. But, yeah, now this is now the arena where every, no other rapper, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry right now. If you are a rapper, an up-and-coming rapper, if you are gonna, if you are anybody, don't release nothing. This is not your time. Once again, like I said, this is a business. And if you really think about it from a business perspective, if anyone is trying to release any new music, you, you need to wait. I don't care if you're an R&B singer. I don't care. It, it, like, anything within... Okay, in the hip-hop space, it's especially you can't release nothing. Even those around it, they're going to be like, oh, you know, I heard this, but, you know, Drake and Kendrick are doing this right now. These are two lyrical behemoths going at it. No one cares about anything that's not this right now, especially in the hip-hop space. So you cannot release anything. I don't care if you got that very special EP you've been holding on to. We don't care. We do not care. You need to wait. You need to wait. You actually need to wait. You need to enter this. Uh, enter this. You know this can die down or simmer down because for the next, I don't even know. Maybe the next week. <laughs> you gotta chill for next week because this is all I've been seeing on my feed. I cannot not see this anywhere. You have people that don't even care about music talking about this. You have streamers that just play games talking about this. You have movie critics and reviewers talking about this. Nothing you do matters in the grace of what's going on right now. That's not saying you don't matter, but I'm sorry. But anything that's not this, it'll be, it'll be put to the side. So you just got to wait. You just got to wait. This is the last one. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double back on this. Drake, please don't drop anything in like the next five minutes, please. <laughs> please don't. Just can y'all just wait like at least just one full day. Just one full day. Can y'all just just chill just for a full day, please? Because we all got it to digest. Back to the shot as I go. I can't say the same thing about Kendrick because he's just gonna drag anyone out of anywhere and press a <laughs> press 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 a gun to your head. Hey yo. I'm out of here, y'all. Y'all be easy. <laughs>